Welcome to lesson four of four in this tutorial, covering power. This is the final video in our series of four lessons on the topic energy changes in a system. In the last lesson, we learnt about the energy changes and focused on specific heat capacity with calculations. As always, here are our key learning objectives for this session. The first is rate of energy transfer. The next is calculating power. And finally, we will look at calculating work done. Here is the list of AQA specification points we'll be covering in this tutorial. Pause the video now to have a quick read through them before we begin. First, we'll look at the definition of power. In previous tutorials, we have looked at how we can calculate the energy transferred when work is done. Now, we will look at calculating the rate of this energy transfer. Power is defined as the rate at which energy is transferred. This is also the rate at which work is going to be done. The unit of power is the watt. One watt is equal to transferring one joule of energy per second. For example, if a lamp had power of one watt, it means it transfers one joule of electrical energy into heat and light energy each second. Next, we will look at calculating power using energy transferred. We can calculate the amount of energy that is stored in or released from a system using this equation. We know that power is going to be the rate at which energy is transferred. This means we can calculate it as the energy transferred divided by the time taken. The short version of the equation is shown here. It is important you know what the symbols stand for in this equation, but it's fine to use it in an exam. As we can see here, the units for this equation are pretty straightforward. You could be asked to write out any of the equations you come across in this video. For example, what is the equation for power? Try to memorise them as you go along and practice using them. Let's put it into practice right now with an exam question. Pause the video here to attempt this by yourself before we go through it together step by step. The answer to this question is 14 watts. Let's see how we got there. First, we need to write out the appropriate equation. For this question, the appropriate equation will be power is equal to the energy transferred divided by the time taken. We know the values for energy and time taken, so we can simply substitute them in for step two. So here, we would do power is equal to our energy transferred, which is 700, divided by the time taken, which is 50 seconds. This gives us a value of 14 watts. Let's look at another equation to calculate power. This time, it involves work done. As well as being the rate at which energy is transferred, power is also the rate at which work is done. 
This means we can define power with a second equation. This equation is work done divided by time taken. The short version is also shown here. It is again acceptable to use this in an exam as long as you know what it stands for. The units for this equation are shown here. We've met them before, so you should be pretty comfortable with using them. Let's try this practice question. Pause the video now to have a go at it by yourself. The answer to this question is 50 watts. Let's go through it together. First, we must write out the appropriate equation. In this situation, we don't know energy transferred, but we do know how much work is done. Therefore, our equation here will be power is equal to the work done divided by the time taken. Now, we must work out the value for the time. In the question, we've been told it lasts for 1.5 minutes. However, we need to get this into seconds. So we know that one minute is going to be equal to 60 seconds. Therefore, 1.5 minutes is going to be equal to 90 seconds. Now that we have the correct values, we can put the numbers into our equation. So here we can say power is equal to the work done, so 4,500 divided by the time taken, which is 90 seconds, which gives us a value of 50 watts. In AQA exams, the question will rarely give the information in the units that you need. Make sure to double check all your units before starting a calculation so that you can convert the values if necessary. Here's a practice question that involves two equations. Pause the video here to have a go at it. The answer to this question is 2160 watts. Let's work through it together step by step. First, we need to calculate the work done, so we'll need our work done formula. This formula is work done is equal to the force times distance. Now we can substitute in our numbers. So our force is going to be 600 times our distance, which is going to be 1.8. This gives us an answer of 1080. Now, we can calculate the power developed by the athlete. For this, we can use the equation power is equal to the work done divided by the time taken. Now that we have all of our values, we can simply substitute them into our equation. So we worked out the work done, which was 1080, divided by the time taken, which we know is 0 0.5, which gives us a final answer of 2160 watts. Let's have a go at a slightly different question. Here, we've been given four statements 
and we need to decide which of them are true. Pause the video now to attempt this. The answer will be shown on the next slide. The answer is C. This is because work done is equal to force times distance, which would be 10,000 times 5, which gives us an answer of 50 kilojoules. A would be false, since some of the output will still be wasted. B is also false, because a very large system can convert lots of energy, but this will be inefficient. D simply cannot be the answer, since it would be one kilojoule is produced every second. Let's move on to our final specification point for this section. Here's a practice question to compare the power of two electric motors. Pause the video now to attempt this question before we work through it together. The answer to this question is that motor Y is more powerful than motor X. Let's see how we got to this answer. First, we need to write out the appropriate equation. In this case, our equation will be power is equal to work done divided by the time taken. Now, we can calculate the power of each motor. So first, we'll work out the power of motor X. So for this, we would do power is equal to 280 divided by 70. This gives us an answer of 4 watts. Now, we need to do the same for motor Y. So for motor Y, we would do the power is equal to 280 divided by 40. This gives us an answer of 7 watts. Finally, we need to actually answer the question. We have found our two values, and here we can see that motor Y is more powerful than motor X. We can link back to our definition for power here. Power is the rate at which energy is transferred or work is done. The faster the rate of the transfer, the more powerful the object. It is worth remembering that a faster motor is always more powerful than a slower motor. We've now covered all the specification points for this lesson. If you're unsure about anything that we have covered, feel free to skip back and watch that section of the video again. We have now completed lesson four.